Today, let us travel to the top of the world, to the Himalayas, a mountain range full of unquestionable beauty and danger. Hidden 16,500 feet above sea level is a secret lake, a lake the locals call Rupkund, but to everyone else, the Skeleton Lake. when Ananda Devi Game Reserve Ranger H.K. Manoal was making his way up to the lake and when he gets there he discovers a lake of death bodies laying everywhere over 300 bodies have been identified so far bones scattered everywhere and even stacked up in mysterious ways put together, put in X's, stacked up to make different bodies, different bones going with different skulls. The place is a mess. Some of the skeletons even had flesh still attached to them, which is why initially people believed that this could have been some kind of invasion force from the Japanese that you know, went undocumented in their demise but they soon realized that's not the case because the artifacts that are found with these bones were iron spearheads leather shoes stuff that we don't use today so when they did some radiocarbon dating they discovered that these bones date back to at least 1200 years ago so this place has been mysteriously lost for 1200 years these people have been up here now there's over 300 people and there is no trade route up here through the Himalayas there no, no people go through here so why were these people up here that's already a mystery where did they come from is another mystery but the biggest mystery was how did they die this is what's interesting the locals had a legend and a song which described how these people died when their they offended their great sky god Latu when he opened up and rained heaven on their heads so this sky god killed these people and what they believe was that after a National Geographic team went and investigated they came to the conclusion that the people were all killed by a massive hailstorm because of indentations and holes and stuff on the back of the people's heads, on the back of their skulls. They claimed that that is why or how they died. Now, there's a lot of interesting things that go on here, but I just want to point out the reasons why I don't believe they are correct in their analogy on what happened. Uh, one, any group of people, especially 300, that are making their way through the Himalayas are going to be smart enough to know how to protect themselves in a freak storm. And even if it took just a couple seconds, I think that they would realize how to cover their heads with anything around them, a piece of rock, something to protect themselves from dying and yet this this is what they say happened and all of these people were completely wiped out another interesting fact is the fact of the size difference between these people because there appeared to be two different people or groups of people one that was extremely tall and the other that was extremely short and they believe the people who were short were from they were like local porters or something maybe and it's interesting because how tall like these other people really were like take a look at that femur bone right there off to the right I mean 
you can see how it's the size of that person's arm right next to them at the very edge of the picture. It might even be bigger than their arm. That was their femur bone. Look at the size of these shoes. They're gigantic. So, I mean, that's really interesting. But what's even more interesting is, is like, <laughs> how is this place still, how does this place still have meat on their bodies 1,200 years in, ago? These people died 1,200 years ago, and they still have flesh on their bodies. That's because of the temperature where they're at. It's frozen 11 months out of the year. So if there's a one-month window where the snow and ice is melted away, and you can come and observe the bones. But any other time, you can't even see them. You can't even get to them. And who stacked up these bones in these weird fashions? And look at the size of that fucking shoe compared to a fully grown man's hand. It's fucking gigantic. And I want to know something. How did they determine that it was hail? Which we all know that, yes, hail could definitely kill people. But how did they determine it was a hailstorm that killed everyone? Well, because of um, indentations and holes and stuff they found on the back of the people's heads. So it started hailing really bad. The people just dropped down and then they were uh, got holes knocked through their heads with the hail. That's how powerful it was. Then how come none of the other bones show signs of that same kind of damage? Only their heads do. Was the hail specifically targeting their heads? <laughs> I mean, did Latu say, hey, fuck it, I'm going straight for the dome? Because their femur bones, their ribs, their arms, everything else d don't have the same markings, the same kind of damage. So how does that make any sense? And look at this picture with the foot, with the meat still on the bone. How'd you like to be that fucking guy? Look like looked like they peeled his wig right fucking off, man. I don't know, but that is definitely a mystery. Wh what happened deep up there? Who these people are? How they died? I mean, that's just crazy. And to see that many different individuals into this little remote lake up in the Himalayas, just spread around all like that. It really is a mystery. All right, you guys, UFO proof out.